All right, uh, second installment on this series. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the ProMod Wind, how it transitions into the top fuel humbucker, um, spin up a coil for you, show you how the tensioner works, all that good stuff, and uh, we'll go from there. I'm just working, turning it on and talking when I feel like saying something, and no script or anything like that. Um, the ProMod Wind, <clears throat> Now, besides wanting to offer something a little bit different that was kind of my own thing, was kind of an accident. Um, I was working on a humbucker specifically for fuzz applications because I like fuzz quite a bit. Um, and I was having a problem with a lot of the plain enamel stuff, especially in very high gain. It didn't seem to accept it very well. And once I tried the poly stuff, it, it, it helped out, but I noticed there was a lack in, you know, organics in, in the overall tone. It seemed like I lost a, uh, a bit of the wood of the guitar, the personality of the guitar. It, it was a bit generic, you could say. So I had the idea to try, you know, two different types of wires, so I mixed the two. And it definitely brought everything back to where I liked it, and it was closer to what I could hear in my head. Uh, so I spent quite a few months experimenting with the, the winding patterns and uh, messed around with the materials a little bit and tuned it into where I wanted. Uh, I equated a lot, or I, the whole pickup thing, I, I equated a lot to building engines because that's what I've done most of my life. And a lot of the, the theory or philosophy is uh, pretty similar if you're trying to build horsepower and you know from streetcars to you know 2000 horsepower and above I've, I've had my hands in it and been acquainted with the, the tolerances and, the, and tight machining which has allowed me to transition into pickup making and building um, pretty easily so it, it, it runs a lot of parallels um, as far as choosing the right parts and and testing it and trying to obtain a goal uh, that you may have. So we'll go on from here. I'll start spinning a coil, uh, show you guys a tensioner, and we'll talk a little bit more about the wind and why I designed the coils the way I do. Okay, now we're going to wind this coil here and um, talk a little bit more about the, the design of this coil. Uh, this is the screw coil uh, for the bridge position. I do alter uh, the wind on every bobbin uh, on a match set. Um, the bridge humbuckers like a lot, t a lot tighter you know, turn per layer count, um, or I guess I like it that way since it's my opinion that on my windings. Um, I keep it pretty tight even though I'm hand winding. Uh, you'll see when the winder starts cruising that it seems like it's going pretty fast, but I, I have a pretty good sense of timing and after winding so many I can keep an eye on the counter and I usually am, am pretty close uh, to gain consistent results. Um, anything plus or minus that number is something I like to think of as randomness uh, which is actually decent to have you know considering scatter wound pickups might be popular depending on the design uh, it's going to give it its own little kind of unique flavor uh, but it's still going to have the basic tonal characteristics um, turns per layer is a, a very important aspect as well as the turn count of the wire uh, the tension that it's applied and the overall height of the coil, uh, typically if they're a lot taller, they tend to get a little brighter. Uh, you can get a little bit more articulation out of them. Um, but with humbuckers and, and being the bridge position, where it's at in the guitar itself, they're going to be somewhat articulate. Uh, just because the string vibration is so tight there. And why it's a little tougher to get a decent sounding neck pickup as you move up the string, you know, they become deeper in tone, you have a lot more string movement 
uh, the notes swell that attack, unless you're picking right over the pickup, can be a little bit more round, uh, which can introduce some mud into the tone. Um, and that, that winding pattern is also modified uh, when I build a set. So I'll start spinning this coil here. Uh, I operate the winder on a, on a foot pedal switch, basically on off, and I'll bring it up to speed and I'll probably go through a thousand turns or so. Um, that's about where I stop to double check the coil and see how it's building and see if I'm doing my job right. Um, and then I'll switch over, show the tensioner for a few, and wrap up the coil and talk a little bit more. thousand winds into it and then do a quick little inspection I also you know magnifying glass it to see uh, see how everything's going and if I have to adjust anything try to zoom in here a little bit 